beauty comes in many forms. Uh, so this is my baby. It was one of the first scars that I got when uh, I started losing my hair a lot and I couldn't hide it anymore. We are all the sum of our experiences and everyone's experiences are different. So I was diagnosed with alopecia when I was five years old. And I had to fall in love with myself. In this series, we're talking about alopecia areata. It isn't just hair. It's the whole persona of a person. We are one puzzle piece uh, to help someone gain their identity back. We are taking a deep dive into the nuances of this complex autoimmune disease. We know that when we are armed with knowledge, we can be better physicians, colleagues, friends, family, and individuals. Alopecia is simply the medical terminology for hair loss. Alopecia areata is a specific type of hair loss due to an autoimmune inflammatory response which attacks the hair follicle. Alopecia areata affects 2% of the population. That's up to 6.8 million people in the United States alone, almost as common as psoriasis. It can impact individuals of any age, sex, or ethnicity. Alopecia areata is distinct from other common types of alopecia. For example, androgenetic alopecia, or male and female pattern hair loss, which is hormonally driven, and telogen effluvium, which occurs within two to four months of a physiologic or emotional stressor and normally resolves within six months. Though patients with alopecia areata often report being otherwise asymptomatic, itching, tingling, or scalp pain may be experienced prior to the onset of hair loss. Because it is a non-scarring condition, the hair follicle itself remains capable of regrowing hair, even if hair loss appears extensive. Alopecia areata can range in presentation. It may be as limited as a small, well-defined patch of hair loss, or as extensive as complete loss of hair on the scalp and body. Each pattern of alopecia areata carries a specific name. Patchy alopecia areata most typically presents with one or more patches of hair loss, commonly on the scalp or beard. Alopecia totalis describes loss of all scalp hair, while alopecia universalis describes loss of all scalp and body hair. The ophiasis pattern of alopecia areata presents as a band-like area of hair loss, most commonly at the occipital hairline, which spreads towards the temples. Ophiasis spelled backwards is Sisypho, another pattern of alopecia areata with the opposite distribution of hair loss. The Sisypho pattern presents as central hair loss at the scalp vertex with relative sparing of the scalp margins. This can potentially mimic severe androgenetic alopecia. Sudden graying pattern occurs when the immune system selects pigmented hairs for attack, leaving any remaining non-pigmented or white hairs behind. This is also called white overnight phenomenon because loss of pigmented hairs gives the relative appearance of a gray head of hair. Diffuse alopecia areata is a rare subtype which presents as diffuse and sudden hair loss without discrete patches. A scalp biopsy performed by a board-certified dermatologist may be necessary to confirm this diagnosis. This subtype of alopecia areata is more commonly described in female patients. 